Hey guys, um, it's good to be here with you and, and there's just a few more things that we need to go over uh, concerning ecosystems and we've already talked about how within an ecosystem you've got predators and prey, there's biotic factors, abiotic factors that all influence the ecosystem, um, but sometimes there's some biotic relationships that aren't quite predator prey and so we're going to look at some of those and one of them they call symbiosis and I, I guess the prefix of that word sim if you think of uh, similar and then the the suffix on that biosis is kind of living so really this this would translate as um, similar living and so when you have two different animals that live in close relationship to each other and, and often their populations are uh, dependent on each other they refer to that as symbiosis so there are some different kinds of symbiosis and first off you see here um, if it's uh, mutual you know beneficial to both and we can symbolize that with a plus plus that is a relationship where both animals will benefit and maybe a good example of this in um, on Facebook you can have uh, mutual friends that where you are a friend to them and they have uh, a friend that's also a friend of yours so you have mutual friends so mutualism is when it's uh, beneficial to both and uh, we'll look at the example of that here in a minute commensalism is when it helps um, one animal and then it, it doesn't really harm the other so there's no benefit to the second so it's a plus and a zero and then, of course, you've probably heard of parasites. And for the parasite, it helps the parasite, obviously, um, but it harms the other animal. So those are uh, the, the different types. Um, again, looking at mutualism, a good example of this would be the clownfish and the sea anemone. And uh, maybe you think of Finding Nemo. And uh, one of the scenes in Nemo that I remember is uh, before he heads off to school, uh, Marlin tells him to brush. So, you know, that's probably something your parents told you to make sure you brush your teeth, but he wasn't talking about his teeth. So uh, Nemo brushes up against a sea anemone. And um, that's actually how he kind of stays immune um, to that sting. So the sea anemone actually provides cover for the clownfish. And at the same time, the clownfish invites other fish to come and check it out maybe they figure if the anemone or if the uh, clownfish can stay safe then maybe they can too so oftentimes it will lure other fish and the anemone will sting it capture it and ends up being a food source so it, it helps both so we call this uh, mutualism the other examples of this would be bacteria and earthworms and the earthworms provide a place for the bacteria to live they get a continual source of material and the bacteria help to uh, get nutrients out of the soil and whatever is moving through the earthworm. So that's uh, another example of mutualism. Uh, the second type, commensalism, where, where it doesn't hurt one, but it um, helps the other. So the uh, good example of this would be the shark and this fish that attaches onto it. It's not really a parasite. It doesn't hurt the shark, but the remora will ride around to different locations and it it uh, benefits by uh, again just moving around I don't know if it exactly cleans the fish uh, but it may pick up some of the scraps that are left over by the shark so that would be benefit to one doesn't hurt the shark at all another example of this would be um, in the ocean you have these sea cucumbers and they kind of take the look of a cucumber that's a close-up picture there, but this little imperial shrimp, it looks like it's kicked back. Uh, once again, it, it gets taken around by the sea cucumber, and it doesn't hurt the sea cucumber. So that's an example of commensalism. And then a third example would be this isopod that's connected to the fish. And you know the main thing to uh, consider is, is it harming the one animal that it's attached to. If it is, it would be a parasite. But in this case, if it's no harm done, then it is commensalism. And uh, finally, our third example would be parasitism. And this is when you it helps the parasite, 
what actually harms the animal. And these we're probably most familiar with. Uh, you know, some examples here of ticks, leeches that'll attach on, suck the blood of an animal, mosquitoes, uh, tapeworms. So those are all considered uh, parasites. And uh, I don't really like to look at those for too long, or this picture of a tick kind of makes you, uh, uh, makes me a little bit itchy or whatever. But those are examples. All right, give you a question here. If it benefits both animals, what would be your answer? I know you can't answer, but we'll kind of simulate uh, the answer, what that would be. In this case, that would be mutualism because it, it's mutual to both. All right, if you think back to the shark and then remora, which kind of symbiosis would that be? And that would be commensalism. It benefits one doesn't hurt the other. So, I don't know what number you normally are, but I guess you can see how the computer computer simulated whether you get that correct or not. You guys probably enjoy that. All right, then finally, uh, the clownfish and the anemone. If you can remember what kind of symbiosis that was. That is mutualism. It is a benefit to the clownfish, place to live, safe place to live. The anemone, other fish are attracted to it, so it benefits both. And then finally, a tick and a deer. What kind of symbiosis would that be? If you were thinking parasite, you are correct. So, I don't know how you did mentally but here's again the simulated results and those are just some of the relationships and examples of those that you know, they, they impact an ecosystem if one animal population increases or decreases that may impact the others um, so next uh, we'll look at energy flow through an ecosystem but i'll save that for the next video